It being the appointed hour, I'll read it. Call the meeting to order. Call the roll, please. He is not going to be here. Gillum? Here. Herod? Here. Finley? Here. Rutherford? Here. Shaw? Here. Salter? Here. And we have a corn. Thank you. Would you please join us in the invocation? Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you this evening with thankfulness for all the blessings that you've given us. Lord, we pray for your hand to be on our military personnel, keep them safe from harm. We pray for our nation's leaders, our state's leaders, our local leaders, that you would give them wisdom and discernment. Lord, we just thank you for all those who are involved and serve in the city government. We pray that, that you would be with them and strengthen them in their endeavors. We pray tonight that you would be with those who are widowed, those who are orphaned, who are sick and infirmed, and those who are in need. Help us to help where we can. And as we go from here this evening, be with us, keep us safe, help us do your will, and we'll give you the praise and the glory. Amen. Amen. Join me in the pledge of attention, position, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. Item one, consider approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gillum. Second by Mr. Commissioner Mayor. Salter. Yes. I'd like to, is it C? Yes. I'd like to pull C for discussion. Or clarification. Your motion stand with C pulled. Ron. Ron. Your motion stand with C pulled. Yes, it would. And your second stand with C yes, pulled. Yes, sir. Call the question. Motion carries uh, five yay and one nay. Item 1C. The mayor, vice mayor, commissioners, can I answer some questions about? Can you give us an, an overall description of what this, the, the benefit to this? The fire station alerting system? Yes. Uh, what it is and the benefit. What it is, basically, it is the electronic system that will handle the uh, call that comes from dispatch uh, for, to, that, to that station. It will handle all of the notification for the firefighters inside the building. So uh, part of it is stuff that we've, all, we've always had, uh, amplifier uh, speakers. We have speakers throughout, the, throughout each station so the guys can hear when a call comes over the radio. It'll tie into our Mo Motorola radio system. It's everything but the radio. So it's the amplifier, it's the speakers, it's lighting that comes on at night when the firefighters are asleep. We'll have the, when the tone goes off, it'll, it'll, it kicks the, kicks the lights on so they can see to get out of the building. Uh, and we have all that now. Um, this will give us a commercial solution for that, so it's, it, it's an improvement over what we have. In the past, what we've had is uh, it's been tied to one individual that's retired that, de that designed all the stuff that we've had to have come back in and work on. So that's one thing that it does for us is it gives us a commercial solution. Two, the two big things that it really does, though, in addition to that, is it gives us the ability to dispatch individual stations. Right now, if the dispatchers need to notify the fire department, they have to notify every station. They have to wake up every every guy at night. Sleep deprivation is becoming more and more of an issue. Uh, you know, when I started 20 years ago, you, you has, didn't have quite so many calls in the night. Now these guys are up all the time, uh, and so we don't. If we don't need to wake up station one and station three, we have a medical call in station two's area. Then we just wake up station two. If that's if that makes sense. Uh, this is needed to do that. So there's a dispatch piece that will go in the dispatch center with, with this installation. And there's a, then there's a piece that will go into uh, into the station, into the individual station. Another thing that it does for us is it gives us the ability. Right now, our, our tone and our and our information go over the 800 megahertz uh, radio system, which is good. But we don't have a backup for that. So uh, if that were to go down, uh, we don't have any other way of notifying just cell phones, that kind of thing. This will give us the ability to it will broadcast simultaneously, redundantly, all the time over IP and over internet uh, our internet protocol system. 
and uh, over the intermittent area. So it's a dual, it's a dual uh, delivery system for all the information coming from dispatch. In addition to that, it hopefully takes some load off the dispatchers because what it, what it gives us the ability to do now is with that dispatch piece, uh, there's a text-to-speech option uh, per, per part in this thing. So when the dispatcher starts typing, they can go ahead and notify. It should shorten response times as well because they'll go ahead and send the call to the station while they're typing. They don't have to. Right now, they have to type and talk or type then talk. So it'll hopefully uh, uh, take some load off of them. You'll hear you won't hear the dispatcher's voice. From, uh, Given the information, you'll hear a uh, an automated voice that that picks up the that picks up the uh, the information being typed into the system. So this is really kind of covering all aspects of communication as well as the alarm. It itself. is. It really covers it's the entire. Look deeply aspect. into the situations, even that might be awkward, and try to relieve those and make them sure and faster. Yes, it's it's one. That's what we like about it. Is it's one big piece that covers the entire communication for the station. The, uh, the, the, uh, the amount for the station, they're, they're roughly the same amount. Uh, the uh, station is 44382.05, and that's for the entire thing. That's all the equipment. That's the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, switch, the, the uh, uh, amplifier, the, all the radio equipment. Uh, not the radios themselves, but the amplifiers, the speakers, the lights, uh, all the speakers for the bay. Uh, and we'll also have notification systems. So the, the, the televisions that are in the station will, have, will be tied into that system. So if the television is on, that it will bring up a screen that will show a map of where the call is and show the time that it was dispatched, the address, and that sort of thing. It'll, kick, it'll, it'll break into the actual broadcast. It's, it's set up to do that with these high definition televisions now. So it will have a few televisions in the, in the station, just monitors that are dedicated for that. So in the bedroom, we'll have one where the guys, when they're coming out, they can look at this and say, okay, it's right here. Here's the address, just to, in case they, you know, didn't hear it, didn't hear it clearly. So that's another improvement. That it totally happen. does away with plausible deniability, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. It does. We, and uh, it also has a piece that lets us know as soon as the truck rolls, so we can so we can see how quick the guys are getting out of the station. They do a good job of getting out of the station in a hurry, but but we'll, it'll give them a countdown clock. So our, our goal is to have the guys out of the station within 60 seconds when, when the tone goes off, even at night when they're in bed. So they'll they'll see a countdown clock on these screens. That'll tell them how, how good they're doing. So, so uh, this this part is we'll take care of dispatch and station two, and at some time in the future we're going to look at doing one and three. Yes, sir. Uh, the forty four three three eighty two zero five is for station two, and then the uh, the forty three five forty thirty four is for dispatch, and that's a one time thing. That we won't have to do that again. We would, we will need to do roughly similar amounts. I've got quotes for station one and three. We'll have to retrofit them as well to to be able to dispatch individually. This will be a step. In the right direction. We just want to get this done while the walls are open on Station Two and everything, and, and uh, it was something we wanted to do a little more research into and make sure we had the right vendor before we weren't ready to, to pull the trigger back when we were looking at the design of the building. So we talked to the architects and they said it's not a problem to do this concurrently. You know, we're just we're just going to contract with these individuals with this company individually uh, to, to install it while the construction is going on. Chief the pricing has gone through. Uh, basically, it's like a state bid process. It's fire rescue GPO. There's a few of these out there that, are, that, are, that we have access to. Uh, we bought <coughs> trucks on a different one on the Houston Galveston area contract. This is the same same concept. And that's where the pricing comes from. Chief, it certainly sounds like this is going to promote both efficiency and effectiveness of the alert system. Have you compared that to other ci city systems? Is there other city systems that have kind of had some outcomes of how effective this is working within them? Absolutely, yes, ma'am. We've talked with a lot of communities that, that have used these systems. Uh, we, we did a lot of research on the vendors. We had two vendors that we really liked. One vendor, their pricing was just outrageous. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and this was the other vendor that we, that we liked actually even more. Uh, and, and their pricing was much more reasonable, much more in line with what we saw. But yes, the, out, the uh, all the communities that you're seeing go to an ISO class one, which is the ultimate goal where we want to go. We need to go to a two first. But all the communities that have an ISO class one, all the communities that are that are SIPC accredited, all that kind of stuff, that, that's that's the kind of stuff you're seeing. Uh, it gives it just gives you like the efficiency and the tools. It gives you more tools to get to get out of the station, and it, and, it, and it's it's very uh, it's very uh, dependable. That's our that's our system right now. It, it works well when it works, but there are times where it's just not dependable. With and, and really, what it does right now it just kicks the lights on in the bedroom. This is going to do a whole lot more. And it basically gives you a, a brain or control center for that station that controls everything. You can control the doors going up. If you want the doors to go up, to go up and the phone goes off, you can do that kind of thing with it. So it's Sounds pretty incredible. Good. 
Sounds good. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. By Commissioner Shaw, second by Commissioner Rutherford. Is there any further discussion? Call the question. Motion carries six eyes. Item two, citizens participation. As usual, we have a three minute per person limit and a 12 minute per topic limit. Uh, if you would like to speak and approach the podium, tell us who you are and sign in. Except in Holly's case, we know, know who Holly is. You are. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, Holly Gordon. And yeah. So, trying to quickly write. And I don't know how many of you may have noticed yet or not that Paul's Place Steakhouse here in Shawnee has become one of our newest Blue Zones approved restaurants. They have some great additions to their menus. Yes, they still have great steaks, but they have some really good um, Blue Zones inspired menu items for lunch and dinner. So um, we have some great things happening in our community for health and wellness, and that's just one of them. So I invite you to go over to Paul's, see Neil, and um, find out about the good things that are happening over there. That's it. Thanks, Holly. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Hello. Okay. I cannot write and talk, so I'm not a Holly yet. Hello. I'm Kate Joyce with the Shawnee Senior Center, and I wanted to tell you all about two things, but mostly get it out there for the public. On March the 22nd, the Shawnee Senior Center will be hosting the DAV service van and what that means is that any veterans who are having troubles with their claims can come and someone will be there to help walk them through their claim and get it filed correctly with the DAV. They'll be there beginning at 9 o'clock in the morning and they will stay for as long as they have people. So um, please if, just if you know people that are having trouble please share the word. I'm going to be putting a post on our Facebook page so that that can be shared as well, but that's a really important thing that we do at the Senior Center for our veterans. And the other thing is we are, for Health Week, going to be doing this a senior stroll. And it's open for the whole family. It's a one mile walk. We're, we will be going up Bell Street, or down Bell Street towards Maine and taking a right and going around the block of Broadway and back to the Municipal Auditorium um, exterior. So please join us, that's on April the 4th and it'll be at 5 o'clock, we'll probably hit the bricks about 5.30 after check-in and everything. So um, I'll probably be up here to do this one more time this month, but I wanted to get it out. Isn't that the cutest logo? Yes. And that will be on our T-shirt. It will be awesome. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Kate. Any questions? Oh, very good. Item three. <clears throat> Mayor's Proclamation of Arbor Day. Shawnee has received this national recognition. 
and whereas trees, wherever they are planted, contribute immeasurably to our wonderful city of which we are most proud. In honor of Arbor Day, the Shawnee Beautification Committee will be planting a tree at Fairview Cemetery located at 1400 North Center Street on March 15th at 4 o'clock, and they would like to invite everyone to attend. Now, therefore, I, Richard Finley, Mayor of the City of Shawnee, Oklahoma, by the authority vested in me to hereby proclaim March 15th, 2018, as Harbor Day. Okay. Item four, discussion and possible action regarding contract review committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, commission members. We have um, um, discussed this uh, previously and uh, Commissioner Shaw had asked for um, uh, a, an action item, I think uh, a little less than a year ago as we had gone through our annual process. And as we've um, collected the information that's in your packet from the historical kind of formation of this committee from 1993, um, looked at its original composition and, and um, <coughs> criteria. Um, we realized that I think it would be best going forward to have some clarification. Um, and I, what we set forth in this memorandum in your packet is, is really a, a couple of options for the commission to consider. Uh, number one, I, I think um, staff is, um, is able to uh, kind of handle the routine renewals uh, um, expeditiously and present those to the commission. We can do most of the work internally if there's a particular contract that, um, that, that may require an additional examination. Um, this body could always appoint a, a subcommittee of commissioners at some point um, when and where needed. Um, second option is if, if um, you believe that the committee has uh, merit and you wish for it to continue um, the present establishment of it probably needs a little bit of clarification the the uh, minutes from 1993 and, and uh, um, speak to a subcommittee of commissioners it doesn't really speak to a um, any at-large committee members that serve in that role and through the years those positions have been added um, but the commission's never approved a, a resolution or an ordinance that kind of spells out that that committee structure in a little bit uh, better clarity. Um, so really just wanted to uh, bring this up to your attention at this time of the year before we start this process because there's still time um, to kind of internalize it and, and, and make it more of a staff driven process if that's the route the commission would like to go or conversely if, if you'd like to um, um, keep the committee and it's basically it's its current structure but maybe formalize it a little bit more than, than we'll need that feedback to before we uh, start this process um, in the next uh, couple of weeks so with that mr. mayor I'll just turn it over to you for, I, uh, I sat on the committee last year and it <clears throat> seemed to me like the items that came through there were either so routine uh, that they didn't need to be there or that we had insufficient expertise on the committee to really deal with that and, and I guess a case in point is uh, the, the most recent insurance committee that we had that we, we appointed and, and I called in uh, two members from the community to help us assess and assimilate that information and my preference in terms of having a standing contract committee is to treat them uh, in one of two ways if they're so routine that we feel like staff can take care of them they can make a recommendation to us it's got, they've all got to come back to us anyway Secondarily, if we feel like if it's a construction issue or, or an issue of any expertise that we don't have among the, the commission members, uh, I would prefer to appoint kind of a task force to sit in on those and I think we can draw upon the assets and the attributes of the committee. Uh, the two people that I had sit in on the, on the health insurance uh, were tremendously helpful, gave us a lot of insight into things that those of us who don't deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis and I found it to be very helpful so that's kind of the genesis of, uh, of, of my thoughts and if there are other thoughts or discussions or questions I agree with you by the way they uh, the only thing I of course I've served on a long time and uh, in the past we've uh, had to uh, eliminate some uh, some proposals 
and uh, and to explain those and so forth, and it'd be easier to do that in the committee setting than it is in, the, and it'd be easier for uh, if the commission's represented on that committee. And we've also not funded some programs uh, for various reasons, and uh, <clears throat> it's easier to handle that in a, a non-public stance than it is to handle it in a public stance. So. And uh, another reason I'd like to see it continued is we're losing uh, two of our in people that serve, have, or serve on that committee, and that's uh, Cindy and Phyllis. So uh, I know the attorney's new, and it was new last year, but anyhow, the attorney advises on whether we can legally, you know, spend money for those purposes or not. And uh, so, I mean, it serves a purpose if, if uh, we didn't. Uh, same kind of road routine last year and some other years in the past it has not been so we've had to request additional information and and so forth so uh, I'd like to see it continued or some kind of form thereof to continue and uh, I feel like it's not you know we should push all of that off on staff and uh, I mean some of it's our responsibility and so I would like to see it continued myself Mayor, and I certainly appreciate what you said in regard to always putting it before the city. And uh, Vice Mayor, I have to go along with you on this one in respect to the fact that I believe that it would take some of the pressures off of our city staff, but it also needs to be a formalized structure. We need to give these individuals the remove the liability and ensure that whatever function that they're doing on behalf of the city that it's been an authorized body that is doing this. So having said that, I would like to, to make the suggestion, that, suggestion to uh, the city manager that we look at formalizing this structure and that we consider putting some uh, more up-to-date language in it, that we consider some selection factors or some ranking and rating factors within the body of this uh, so that when we evaluate these that we're both objective and fair consistently. Do we have the option of the, keeping the contract review committee and formalizing it like we were talking about? Does that mean everything goes to the committee or we're going to have a structure for a committee that will be appointed specializing in, you know, what type of entity we're going to send to it? From a protocol standpoint, it is, where are we? Does everything now go to that committee? No, it's just the community service contract. It's the community service service okay. contract. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is so a pretty narrow subset of about city contracts on the annual SEDF. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Citizen, senior citizen, uh, senior center. Do we have one with Hart Project Hart? No, sir. Um, so we have six contracts currently: Economic Development Foundation, Safe Events for Families, Senior Citizens of Shawnee. Central Oklahoma Transit System, Historic Shawnee Alliance, and Visit Shawnee. So those are the kind of the six, and, and that's been I think pretty typical for maybe three years in a row now. But uh, I've also seen other contracts go on in review under this as well. So it's not just our those that you've mentioned, but there has been others. So if we're going to consistently use this kind of body, then we need to give it the authority and sanction it to do so. And if we don't such as what the mayor is saying and we put it before the city each time mm -hmm. at least the people in the community will get to see what we're doing and get to uh, have a better understanding of why we came to those decisions and I'd like to um, say thank you Commissioner Gillum because I saw that you were a part of that process that put those established guidelines into place 25 years ago so <laughs> 25 years ago. <laughs> 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 but who's counting? Uh, that's right. That's right. Didn't see anything on that list. Other questions, comments? Banker, you going to put that in the form of a motion, Commissioner Shaw? Um, I'd like to make the motion that we direct staff to formalize the contract review committee through the creation of a formal resolution ordinance to be considered by the city commission at the next meeting is there a second second could you, uh, could you repeat that please? <laughs> <laughs> you have it right here it's up on line two under your recommendation okay. i'll give it to you okay 
there any further discussion? Call the question. Do we need to read the resolution again before we vote? Everybody understand what we're voting on? Yeah, reread it. I'm making the motion to direct staff to formalize the contract review committee through the creation of a formal resolution or ordinance to be considered by the city commission at the next meeting. Okay, there's a motion a second. Please call the question. Motion carries has five yay and one nay. Item five, discussion and consideration of consulting agreement with Insurica to provide insurance, consulting, and employee benefit services to the city of Shawnee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Commission members, uh, in your packet this evening is a consulting agreement with Insurica. Insurica has provided these services for the city uh, for approximately uh, 10 years or so. Uh, we went through a uh, comprehensive uh, review process that included a uh, public solicitation that resulted in uh, submittals by four uh, very professional firms that specialize in employee benefits and have lots of experience with uh, municipal and government clients. On January 16th, uh, after those, um, or as those were coming in, on January 16th, the Commission established a subcommittee to review those submitted proposals. That subcommittee met and personally interviewed all four of those firms uh, in person. And uh, upon review and analysis, uh, a consensus was made to select uh, Insurica. It was a very close uh, discussion to deliberation. They were all very, very uh, good firms. I think would have done uh, a good job for the city. Uh, but it is our recommendation to uh, award this contract to Insurica in the amount of $30,000. This contract will be for one year and will be presented uh, uh, annually to the commission for review and approval. Are there any provisions in there to continue it or you don't have to take bids every year? We, you can renew with Insurica um, for, a, uh, yes sir, you, 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 you could. Um, and what most cities do is maybe have an interval of maybe every two or three years of going through a solicitation process. It's kind of an elaborate process. Right. You typically wouldn't do it every year, but it is at the pleasure of the commission. Some of the proposals were multi-year. Yes, sir. That we received, so they're not. There, there's no standard particularly. We worked with the insurer when I served on the staff committee, and that ever, I mean, the representative does a great job, and the company all provides. And uh, we, you know, I don't know about bringing people in from their company when they need help. Mm -hmm. I am on a SNL board in Oklahoma City, and we have uh, five uh, branches, and we use uh, not the same contract, but the insurers are, are representative of them for our employees, too. So, okay. yeah, I think it'd be a good deal. I'd move that we hire the insurer. insurer Moved by Commissioner Herod to execute with Insurica. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Shaw. Is there any further discussion? Call the question. Motion carries 6-0. Item 6, discussion and relating to the calling of an election to amend Section 2 of Article 3 of the City Charter regarding electing city commissioners at large. Uh, this is an item that uh, Commissioner Shaw and I had kind of discussed between the two of us. Uh, she had, she's been pushing this for some time, and, uh, and I brought it up at the meeting last week. And uh, the reason I put it on here is really not to debate it among ourselves at this point, but to uh, instruct the staff to gather some information regarding what other cities are doing and really just make the public uh, aware that we are, we are considering this uh, and will at some future point. There's absolutely no urgency about this because we don't have enough time between now and the upcoming elections for this to be effective. So it's, it, 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 on a best case basis, it's gonna be a couple of years down the road uh, before this impacts anything. But it gets it out there on the horizon. We can discuss it, debate it, and, and talk about it. So it'll be discussed at the next meeting then? It can be discussed, really, whenever it can come back up. I don't particularly care when it gets discussed because we don't have a, a timing issue on it. I'd like to give the public plenty of time to give us some feedback and uh, and to talk among ourselves and right. there, there's a little bit of homework that needs to be done in turn pulling them in my mind and pulling the precinct votes and kind of seeing uh, my initial concern was that a very small number of votes uh, could call an election I get without getting into the arguments to and from uh, 
we just need, I think, to publish smaller that. Smaller electorate tends to, a uh, larger electorate overcomes anomalies, whereas uh, a smaller number can be controlled much more easily. That, that's the argument, and, uh, and, and I understand. We, we can get into it very deeply, and I have a lot of issues about that we can talk about when the time's right. Yeah. So it's a, just to make the public aware that we're talking about this, and, and we'll be debating it. And, yeah, and I might add, uh, at that, with a caveat, I'm not intending to run again in 2020. It has nothing to do with me. Well, I'd like to say several <clears throat> things here. You got the floor. <laughs> One is that the mayor is very gracious in putting this before us because he and I had rather a, a heated debate over this, as Commissioner Gillum and I have as well. Um, this is an action that was placed before the city commission about a year ago. And it was done by a very informed and logic-based individual by the name of Linda Ag. And she did an actual study. She went out to uh, 20 cities and she, um, she did some fact-finding. And this was given to us as city commissioners. Uh, this was all here, and I'd like to read into the record what she said. A little over a year ago, I contacted mayors and councilors in about 20 cities throughout the state to see how they elected their councilors and commissioners, and how they and their constituents felt about the arrangement. All of them with ward elections expressed satisfaction and said overall their constituents were very happy with it too. Some of the cities elected all commissioners by ward, while a few elected one or two commissioners at large, and the remainder by ward. Almost all of them elected the mayor at large. From past comments I have heard, I know some of you may be opposed to the idea of elections by ward, but I hope you will take time to review the two attachments. And then she provided a list of the cities that she communicated with, and I'd like for the city manager to place these on our website so that anyone and everyone can see that this was a survey done um, by a former city commissioner with the assistance, I believe, of the city manager. She's also listed a number of the pros and cons uh, that uh, should be considered in doing some type of action to to the extent that this could be done. And I think it's very fact-based. I don't think I need to argue the point at all. I think that uh, what she has illustrated here is very um, clear and concise, and I would certainly encourage that we let, leave this to our public and get some public comments on and let them sway that decision so that uh, we as the city body up here don't debate it among ourselves because that's I, I can't mention one thing very clearly that had that been in effect the previous election this commission would be entirely different than it is right now that may well be the case but that would probably be the consensus of the people that represented those wards and they have that right in my opinion that is my opinion I'm what going we to have stop existing here in Shawnee is a, a powerful neighbor who did have issues in the last election and spent an awful lot of money to create an anomaly that normally wouldn't be occurred naturally in most 19 of those cities, <coughs> 20 of them. Secondly, that they probably don't have a situation where a single ward is separated 20%, uh, 80% by 10 miles of road. So there are other things that exist here that would have to be looked at. You know, if we have a powerful neighbor in this area, we should consider that as a, a brotherly uh, neighborhood thing because we have demogra demographics that uh, indicate that our population may be predominantly white, but our next largest race is American Indian. So let's keep that in mind. Let's as we also make it clear that I appreciate our tribes and we are dependent upon those tribes for our welfare to a great degree and, and the jobs and the income for this community. So I'm not trying to change that. I'm just saying a larger electorate tends to even out anomaly. Defer to the next meeting. We have time. Okay, we can defer. We can we do need, amendment do we need a, delineation. Do we need a motion to reconsider <laughs> item seven? Yes, seven. Seven. Seven was the ordinance, and I apologize, Commissioner. I thought when you said resolution, I thought we were moving to eight. So the same language is in both seven and eight. Just 
Scrivener error to should be appointment instead of election. So we're going to amend by interlineation and let's just pass them today. Okay, let's do that. Okay. So we'll need a motion to revisit agenda item seven. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to revisit agenda item seven. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Rutherford. And what is and it you're point, suggesting? At that point, if uh, it's in the ordinance head where it calls for election, that should read appointment. That's a Scrivener's error. So if the motion is made to pass the ordinance with an amendment by interlineation to appointment, where it refers to election, and a second, then that would be an appropriate vote. So in the next to the last sentence, election becomes appointment? Correct. And that's the only change? No. That's in two places on the second line and the next to the last line. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could. That's, that's a legislative function, not a... Is there any reason why we shouldn't just change the word election to appointment in those two places? No, that's... That Is there a necessity to have it uh, conducted by the Pottawamie County elect election board or should just be stricken no, beyond that, that point? That's, that's a, a requirement. <clears throat> we do need that in there. We need to, okay. we need to vote on... Yeah, the motion Backing to reopen up on seven and yeah. then start yeah. over. Yes. Motion to reconsider item seven. Call the question. Motion to second. Vote. Okay. <coughs> motion carries six ayes, no nays. Uh, I'd like to make a motion, Mayor, <coughs> to defer item number eight to the next meeting. Uh, motion by seven. Commissioner we, Shaw we, to we, defer. Seven. 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 We're on okay. seven. I thought we already did. We just re We just undid it. Okay. Seven and eight. Did we do that? No, we can do seven. Okay. That's what we're in. Let's defer item number seven to the next meeting. Motion to defer item number seven. Is there a second? Motion fails for lack of a second. Uh, is there a motion to change the the word election in the second line? And the next to the last line to appointment. Sir, may we change the wording? Commissioner Hare moves. Sir, second. Second. Second by Commissioner Rutherford. Any further discussion? Read the new title. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. An ordinance related to the terms of mayor and city commissioners and election of the vice mayor, amending section four and section six of article three of the charter of the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma changing the time for the beginning of the terms for the mayor and city commissioners to conform with election dates and setting the time for appointment of vice mayor and setting the effective date and providing for severability. Still stated election in the first line. <laughs> what she said. We, we've gone off the rails. I apologize. <laughs> I, I, I think the motion is to change out election to appointment in all right. instances referring to the vice mayor. Correct. Correct. So election to appointment. In all instances. In all, okay. In all instances referring to the vice mayor. Correct. Very good. Okay. Which would require then that this is an ordinance related to the terms of mayor and city commissioners and appointment of the vice mayor, amending section four and section six of article three of the charter of the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma, changing the time for the beginning of terms for the mayor and the city commissioners to conform with the election dates and setting the time for appointment of vice mayor and setting the effective date and providing for severability. Correct. Call the question. Uh, five yeas, one abstention. Item eight.
consider a resolution calling for and providing for the holding of a general election in the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma for the purpose of adopting an ordinance amending Section 4 and Section 6 of Article 3 of the Charter of the City of Shawnee, Oklahoma, changing the time for beginning of the terms for the mayor and city commissioners to conform with the election dates and setting the time for appointment. <coughs> of the vice mayor providing for said election to be conducted by Pottawatomie County Election Board and providing for voting by absentee ballot. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. And that would be with Commissioner Rutherford, the amendment by interlineation to replace all instances of election of vice mayor with appointment? Yes. And two seconds. <laughs> yes, <sir>. Commissioner <laughs> Harrod second. He read it in, so yeah. Further discussion. Just so we're clear. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A resolution calling for and providing for the holding of a general election in the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma, for the purpose of adopting an ordinance amending Section 4 and Section 6 of Article 3 of the Charter of the City of Shawnee, Oklahoma, changing the time for the beginning of terms for the office for mayor and the city commissioners and also providing for the dates of appointment of the vice mayor, providing for said election to be conducted by the Pottawatomie County Election Board and providing for voting by absentee ballot. Any further discussion? Call the question. Could you me clarification please discussion. on the areas that will be corrected on this resolution? Specifically, commissioner, that would be uh, that which was read into the resolution title, um, the change there from election to appointment. Uh, additionally, in the third recital, whereas as per the result of the changes, the vice mayor is appointed annually on the first Monday in the month following the election. Recognize that change. And I believe that that would be. Actually, two more. Yes. The section two, where it refers to elect the vice mayor, that would be appoint the vice mayor. And proposition two. In the heading where it reads that the vice mayor shall be elected, that would be changed to appointed. I believe that would be it in that resolution. Okay. Call the question. Motion carries five yay, one abstention. Item nine, consider an ordinance relating to the calling of an election amending section seven of article 14 of the charter of the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma, changing the method of ordering the, and holding, ordering the holding of elections by resolution, which conforms to state law and setting the effective date and providing for severability. So nine and 10 are, are uh, interrelated. And we talked about this before too. These were deferred from August 21st. And you might recall that our uh, city charter requires that we, um, that you pass an ordinance uh, for any uh, election items, uh, whereas state law and the county election board uh, says a resolution will do. But because we have that language in our charter, we have to do both, which is why your last two actions, uh, when, when you make an amendment on something, it, it can be more cumbersome because you've got to do it twice through two documents. So what 9 and 10 do, one via ordinance and one via resolution, is submit to the voters uh, an amendment to city charter that allows us to default to the state law and to what the county election board uh, mandates, which is um, a call simply by resolution. So um, if you pass 9 and 10 and voters pass it in June, uh, then, then you'll never see another uh, uh, ordinance on here. <laughs> <clears throat> be happy to answer any questions that you have. I'd like to say I did that last one on purpose just to drive <laughs> that point <laughs> home. 
<clears throat> is there a motion to approve? <laughs> I, I guess I need clarification on this, Joe. I know that this is Article 14, and when I pulled the Code of Ordinances, this truly does change our method. Uh, that language is new that's under there. Was that our intent on Sections 1, 2, and 3? to change from what we, our original language was in that ordinance? Here's the in the charter, you mean? Yeah. Yes, that's the it intent. Does away, it does away the, with the, the requirement is, to have yeah, the ordinance. As, yeah, the manager was Because state law only requires a resolution, we have an additional requirement, essentially. And so it's creating duplication, as we're seeing in these sets of ordinances and resolutions. Also causes a recodification problem, doesn't it? <laughs> Potentially, yes. Yeah. Okay, I think there was one other concern that I had on that, and I must admit that I've forgotten what my question was. Um, I guess I'll just abstain from that. Okay, is there a second? Second. You made the motion, you can't second your own motion. Oh, I thought this. <laughs> we made the favor motion. I guess. Is there a <laughs> second? <laughs> Chair seconds. <laughs> Call him. <laughs> Read the title. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's <laughs> taking so long to get to it. I was just trying to figure it out. An ordinance related to the calling of an election amending Section 7 of Article 14 of the Charter of the City of Shawnee, Oklahoma, changing the method of ordering the holding of elections by resolution, which conforms to state law and setting the effective date and providing for severability. Call the question. Motion carries five yay, one abstention. Item 10, consider a resolution calling for and providing for the holding of a general election in the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma for the purpose of adopting an ordinance amending section 7 of article 14 of the Charter of the City of Shawnee, Oklahoma, changing the method of ordering the holding of elections by resolution which conforms to state law and providing for said election to be conducted by Pottawatomie County Election Board and providing for voting by absentee ballot. Is there a motion? Commissioner here. <laughs> Move. You're not Commissioner, second, Commissioner, okay. Commissioner Gillum seconds. There any further discussion? <laughs> Call the question. Got to re got briefly to re read that, no. in, Mayor. Thank you. A resolution calling and providing for the holding of a general election in the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma, for the purpose of adopting an ordinance amending Section 7 of Article 14 of the Charter of the City of Shawnee, Oklahoma, changing the method of ordering the holding of elections by resolution which conforms with state law, providing for said election to be conducted by the Pottawatomie County Election Board and providing by, for voting by absentee ballot. Now call the question. Motion carries six, uh, five ayes and one nay. Item 11, consider an ordinance calling for a general and runoff election for Ward 1, Ward 5, and Ward 6. This is just a routine, routine uh, matter of business, uh, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. We do have uh, those three wards that are up for election this uh, June. Is there a motion? So moved. Commissioner Rutherford. Is there a second? second. By second. Commissioner Gillum. Is there any further discussion? You have to read. I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. An ordinance calling and providing for the holding of a general and runoff election in the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma, for the purpose of nominating and electing candidates for the office of city commissioner of the first ward, city commissioner of the fifth ward, and city commissioner of the sixth ward, establishing a filing period and qualifications for such offices, designating the manner of electing the various city offices named herein, providing for said elections to be conducted by the Pottawatomie County Election Board, providing for voting by absentee ballot, providing for severability and declaring an emergency. Call the question. Uh, 
Motion carries, five ayes and one nay. Is there a motion for to adopt the emergency clause? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Heard, second by Commissioner Gillum. Do we need to read anything? No. Call the question. Uh, no, this is the emergency clause on 11. Second part of the letter. Motion carries five ayes and one nay. Consider item 12. Consider a resolution calling for a general and runoff election for Ward 1, Ward 5, and Ward 6. Is there any discussion among the board other than what Commissioner Shaw has called the attention of council? And Commissioner's Mayor, uh, Commissioner Shaw has highlighted language that can be found on the second page of the ordinance in the top paragraph of the second page. Uh, and I'll just read it uh, for ease. If one of the two candidates nominated for an office dies or removes from the city, or from his ward the remaining candidate is elected ipso facto and shall be issued a certificate of election and his name shall not appear upon the general general runoff election ballot and so you wanted that drawn to attention i just wanted them to be aware of the, how this has changed from the original language in case you weren't aware so, that, that, that's, that's actually not a change I think the ballots had already been printed. Yeah, I, <clears throat> we're not changing the language. Uh, I didn't see it so fast. In in August? <coughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, that's what, again, I, that's my discussion item that you've already passed that. So. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? Commissioner Harris, is there a second? And actually, and I give credit where credit's due, Commissioner Shaw's already pointed out that in the ordinance title there's a typo. And then the last sentence where it refers to, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's on the resolution. We're on the resolution, correct? We're on yes. And in, in the resolution title, excuse me, it says beard where it should say board. So if the motion would include correction of that. Your motion to include correction of that. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Salter. Is there any further discussion? Call the question. Who made the first? Parrot. A resolution calling and providing for the holding of a nonpartisan general and general runoff elections in the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma, for the purpose of nominating and electing candidates for the offices of city commissioner of the first ward, city commissioner of the fifth ward, and city commissioner of the sixth ward. Establishing a filing period and qualifications for such offices, designating the manner of, the, of electing various city, city offices named herein, providing for said elections to be conducted by the Pottawatomie County Election Board, providing for voting by absentee ballot. Call the question. Motion carries five ayes, one nay. Item 13, discussion and possible action to direct staff to prepare an ordinance and resolution relating to the calling of an election for the purpose of a one-half cent sales tax for June 26, 2018 general election. Is there any discussion? Is there a motion? Chair moves. Second. Second by Commissioner here. Only discussion I have is uh, to, you know, to the city manager and staff, make sure we publicize the project that's going to be included, and uh, make sure that uh, in the 
future those projects are all carried out and then what's the, I'm, one question is what's the length of time on the half cent do you, is it a permit or is it going to be a, I mean, you all will make that determination when, when we finalize the, the ordinance, so you'll have a chance to look at that. Um, we oh, had okay. talk, talked at the workshop on, on March 1st about a 10-year uh, term. Five to ten or something, seven, something like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think ten, 10 years was the maximum that, yeah. uh, that was discussed. Uh, regarding this, the projects, I think what would be best if, uh, in, in conjunction with the ordinance, you know, we can uh, specify broadly um, the ratios, like we talked about, 25%. For public safety 25 percent for streets and roads 50 percent for facilities we can embed that language in the in the um, ordinance itself if you'd like to be that specific and then secondarily um, you all can adopt a, a project list a kind of a sample um, a, a list of projects so that we can take that to the public that it's been endorsed by you officially and so we can we'll prepare all that for um, hopefully if, if not the next meeting it would be the first meeting in, in april any other questions, comments? Call the question. Who made the first and second, please? I made the motion and Herod seconded. Okay. Five ayes, one abstention. Is there any new business? No, sir, there's not. Commissioner's comments. Yeah, I'd like to mention one thing, I think. They, uh, I saw something that uh, reminded me about why we do things as for society, for our progeny that's coming after us. That one example was I saw that uh, selflessness is an old man planting a tree whose shade he'll never experience. And I thought about that. I get, there's so many people planting trees, and that would be, I'll look at the castle workers, for instance, at the ca case workers and so on. I've been involved in situations where I've, I saw them at, at, uh, at let's say, at the stressful job that they do and uh, doing such a wonderful job for it. Of course, castle workers are unpaid, and they may have six, five or six different cases that they would go before the court in order to, uh, to look out for the welfare of, the, of these younger people. But I think we at times need to look at those people who are giving selflessly of their times uh, planting trees or planting seeds that maybe they can't experience, but the future will give them benefits from or all of us benefits from. Well, I'd like to talk about all the election rules and everything else. There was a bill in the Senate that didn't get out of the committee, and that was that cities and school districts couldn't call special elections except on election day. So. Uh, our representative, or, well, I'm sorry, the House bill, and our representative uh, was one of the ones that uh, kept us from getting out of, out of the committee. So we can, uh, I explained to him that we pay for the election, the school districts pay for the election. So if we want to have one, you know, it's up to the commissioner, up to the school board, and if they want to pay for them. So uh, I'm very, you know, I was very happy with uh, his decision to vote against it, and therefore we can continue with our elections as we always have my turn your turn citizen academy this was brought to my attention today and i thought it was worth sharing um i hadn't heard of it before the police department i believe it used to be the police citizen police academy uh it's one two i'm i'm kind of winging this it's four days in march some evenings a couple hours in the evening a couple hours in the days uh the first one, March the 15th, local government structure, how city and state governments operate. I believe you're going to speak at that. I am. Uh, and I then, was there last month. And actually. then Senator Ron Sharp speaks after. Uh, March the 17th, Parks and Recreation is going to be there making a presentation. James is going to do that. Uh, nonprofits will be there that day. Uh, economic Development, March the 22nd. Tim Berg's going to do a presentation. Then technology, Steve Nolan, and then uh, Police Fire and React, March the 24th. It's, it's a, it looks like a pretty good thing for people to participate in, it, to it learn is. what all is going on with all different aspects of, aspects of the city. And uh, I'd like to encourage people to look into that and, and participate in it. If we can <clears throat> promote that a little bit, I think it's a really good, a really good thing. Very good. I agree. Good idea. 
you know, uh, several of you have mentioned some of the state actions and some of the local actions, and I'd like to just reiterate that our teachers are out there struggling. And uh, if you can encourage your legislators to support certain actions that would improve the, the health and well-being for our teachers, I'd certainly appreciate it because these teachers really do struggle. Coming. We are adjourned to the Shawnee Airport Authority. Item one, consider approval of the consent agenda. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gillum, second by Commissioner Rutherford. Is there any discussion? Call a question. favor of the consent agenda on the Shawnee Airport Authority sure, punch sure yes, but, <laughs> uh, motion passes five eyes and one abstention item two discussion consideration of possible action to authorize staff to engage services for fuel system repairs and staff training okay, happy to answer any questions just for the discussion on this item has this been coming for a while, or did we get caught off guard with uh, where we stand on our fuel system or fuel delivery and everything? Or? Mr. Rutherford, I've been here six weeks, I think it's been. I, so I started I don't to know. clarify that. I, I knew my you history were, since you were new, so I didn't <laughs> have to do to you. So I can give you a six week view on it, uh, which is that uh, we did have a small issue that brought this to our attention, but then we did have a regularly scheduled uh, quality control visitation from our fuel provider Philip 66 which is it, it happens every two years and so on that two-year mark they come and help us to assess all of our equipment and our procedures and make recommendations for improvements so my personal history on it is very short term but I would suggest that it, it is a standard two-year inspection and each time that happens of course the recommendations are made I appreciate the detail you put into your memo in regard to this. I certainly like it when staff show the reason and the basis for their actions. So thank you for the, that detailed account. Um, is this going to have any negative impact to your budget or since this is something that's just... We developed? may have to look at some of the other places to cut back. Okay. But if <clears throat> basically... Correct me if I'm wrong. If we do not fix this, we can't sell fuel. So that I read that. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gotta have the fuel. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Gill. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Herod. Is there any further discussion? Call the question. Motion carries with six ayes. Is there any new business? No, sir. We are adjourned to the Shawnee Municipal Authority. Consider a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. By Commissioner Herod. Second. This is kind of a sleepy crowd tonight. Second by Commissioner Salton. <laughs> There's there any discussion? Call the question. Motion carries five ayes and one abstention. Is there any new business? No, sir, there is not. We are adjourned. So, uh, yes, sir.